Uh, the big thing about 2017 is it's over. And uh, our players have done a really good job of learning from the past, but not living off of it. I mean, there's nothing we can do just because we made the playoffs last year and we had a pretty good year does not translate to wins this year. And our guys, I really thought uh, coming off that season were really hungry. They had a great taste for you know that playoff football. It is, it's exciting. And uh, I would say the winter, as well as the spring and in the summer, I thought the guys were really focused on how much further we can take this. Regardless of, of the outcome, if it's not national champions, I mean, everybody's gonna be a little disappointed. You know, we, we didn't win at all, and uh, we did not win a conference title. And that's the thing our players looked at, you know, we, yeah, we won 10 games, but you know, we didn't accomplish some of our, our big goals. There's always room for improvement. And uh, regardless of who's back or who graduated, you know, the, the foundation of this program was built, you know, when we came here as a staff in 2011. Our job was to try to create depth at every spot. And uh, regardless of who's graduated, we always look to replace better. You know, that's one thing we talk about. If player A leaves the program, how much better can the next player coming in that replaces him be? You know, everybody thought when Monterey Williams left, you know, who's the next tailback? And then Daquan Ford showed up. And everybody thought, oh man, Daquan Ford, he's one of the best backs ever. Who, how are you gonna replace him? And then Chauncey Bridges shows up. And then when Chauncey got hurt, Dada Silla shows up and then Michael Campbell. So, you know, it, it, that's just an example of one position, but, but at every spot, regardless of who left and who graduated, we did, we had some great players graduate. You know, we had three, you know, players of the year. You know, an offensive lineman of the year, a defensive lineman of the year, as well as a defensive back of the year. You know, many accolades, all conference, all American, all region. But uh, ultimately, our players, what they did is they just set a standard that's higher than it was before. And now it's the players on this current team to try to reach towards that. Those individual awards are byproducts of good football teams. And, and everybody that got an individual award here, regardless of who it is, it's all because of the other unit. And it's because of the other teammates. And, you know, there's nobody, there's no wide receiver ever gonna break any records without a great quarterback and offensive line and running game. So from that perspective, our players have really, really, you know, done a good job of, of really focusing on how good can we be as a team and all the other stuff take care of itself. This year, uh, we have 20 seniors. And, and the good part about this senior class is all of them are substantial contributors. You know, most of them are starters. If they're not starting, they're playing a ton of football. So when you have a group of seniors that are all playing and contributing, uh, it, it leads to a really good team chemistry. You know, sometimes you had some senior classes where, you know, freshmen might have come in and, and maybe overtaken a senior. And there's a little, there's a little dissension when that happens and it, it's not the smoothest, smoothest when the seniors aren't playing, but, you know, this senior class is, is loaded with talent and production. You know, initially when the, uh, we broke away from the GLIAC, uh, there was a lot of talk, especially from the, from the, the GLIAC. I mean, there's no doubt we left them and, you know, the GMAC's gonna be a, a very poor conference and not a lot of good teams. Uh, and, you know, I, I thought that uh, the first year in the league was, was really, really competitive. Uh, if you look at the top of the conference, you know, you mentioned, you know, us being preseason ranked, Ohio Dominican being preseason ranked, and you have Hillsdale in another poll being preseason ranked. So three teams that uh, had success in the GLIAC uh, and moved into the GMAC, and we're excited about Tiffin coming in. So, you know, it, it did help, there's no doubt for us, you know, winning that game on the road, uh, round one of the playoffs. You know, just moving into the conference in the second year, I think it's gonna be even better. I mean, guys understand, we've, we've played against each other now, there's some familiarity, there's some rivalries being built. Uh, and when you have that, you know, it is, it's funny, some of the teams maybe that didn't have success, they saw what it took to maybe compete this level and in this league. So you know, no doubt, they're gonna recruit better. And, and, and like I said, it, everybody's gonna catch up to everybody at some point in time. For me, I'm excited for the players to be able to showcase their skills on a national level. And for people that maybe not have got a chance to watch them, whether it's friends or relatives that, that aren't in this area, that can't get to a game, they get to you know, you know, click on the TV or stream it through the internet and watch us play uh, with national commentators. So it's a really neat experience. I know from our standpoint, you know, it helps in recruiting. I, I know that uh, we always tell guys, they don't pick bad teams to play on national TV. And uh, we're really excited about the exposure. And our guys have earned that, you know, the, the teams that came before them and the wins that we've, uh, we've accomplished and piled up, that it really you know, lent to saying, hey, we wanna, we wanna feature them because they're one of the top teams in Division II. So uh, I'm excited about it, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I wish every game was televised nationally, you know, but uh, it, uh, it, it does, it, it adds a little bit for our players and it, and it does 
Uh, I help the program because it, 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 it puts us out nationally and for people to see well, what kind of product we have on the field. You know, this year's offense, uh, we do have a lot of pieces returning. Uh, it's great to have two veteran quarterbacks at the helm. I mean, you know, both of those guys are so uh, smart when it comes to our package. They understand what we expect of them. And then, you know, the offensive line, the five guys that started the playoff game are all back. So, you know, when you start with that group, you got a solid group up front and you got the quarterback back, it gives you a chance. And you sprinkle in some of the skill guys who are back. And we got some new pieces that we're going to kind of slide in there. I mean, there's some new faces that I thought have stepped up and, and played really well, and they'll get some substantial playing time uh, in 2018. But, you know, the offense, it's simple. Every year we've kind of moved the offense forward when it comes to scoring and yards, and it's no different this year. You know, the benchmark's pretty high, uh, but, but the big thing is with our offense, being consistent uh, regardless of what game it is. You know, I, I want our guys, you know, yeah, we, we, we had some big numbers last year in certain games, but in those big games against really good defenses, we're looking to still have that production, you know, hopefully hitting that 40 point mark. Because if you can get up to that word, you know, up to that point where you're right around 40 points a game, you know, you have a chance to win them all. Uh, I, I know that, uh, you know, there's been some staff turnover and I know with the, the new coaches in place, you know, they're really excited to see what this 2018 offense can be. I know that uh, there is the potential to be exceptional, but it, it's a matter of just improving every day and, and it comes down to production. From a defense perspective, uh, we do have a couple pieces uh, to replace. You know, when you have a defensive lineman that uh, was all GMAC defensive lineman, and you have a defensive back that was the defensive back of the year in the conference, you know, those are two very productive players that uh, you're going to have to find uh, some players to fill that void. And I think we have. And, and then at the same time, if we are having success, how fast can we put teams away? Because uh, there's some situations, you know. Uh, this past season, I thought we did a really good job of that. You know, hey, we're, we're winning 21 nothing, and before you know it, it's 50 nothing. And, and that's some of the things that the good teams show. They don't play down to a level of an opponent. They play to the standard that they have set. With the special teams units, uh, again, we have some experience back, which really, really makes the head coach comfortable because, you know, those special teams, they're an important role to, to winning games. Uh, there's a lot of thankless jobs, the long snapper, the holder, some of those guys, but both snappers, the short snapper and long snapper are back, you know, our punter's back, and, and he's done a really good job over the past, you know, three seasons going into his fourth year as a starter. And in the kicking role, I thought our guys uh, have competed, and uh, we have a, a number of guys that have improved greatly from 2017 through winter, through our spring ball, and then through camp. So I, I think... Uh, you know, our, 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 our ability to kick the ball and score points and then kick the ball and change field position, I think we're going to have some, some guys that can do that and some weapons that help us win these games. I'm really excited about Troy Rothenbuehler getting his opportunity to coach for the Arizona Cardinals. You know, it, it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, he's done a great job here in the past seven years. And uh, there's a lot of good football coaches throughout the country, regardless of what level it is. On the field, simple. I mean, I'm not, we can go back to the same cut I had in 2011 when I got hired. The goal is to win every game. There's, it's never going to change on the field. You know, I don't care, regardless of the opponent, regardless of the situation, our goal is to win every single football game that we play and prepare to give us a chance to do that. You know, is that going to happen? No, it's, I mean, we've lost games over the last seven years, but you know, that, that's the goal. And, and our guys understand that, that the expectation regardless of, like I said, who we play or where we play, is to win that game. You know, it's one at a time. I know it's kind of cliche from a coach's perspective, but it's true. You know, take one game at a time, can we win that game? And whatever happens in that result, whether it's win or lose, we have to move forward from it. You know, the win uh, week one does not help week two. A loss in week one does not affect week two. And that's some of the big goals we talk about on the field. Uh, on the field, like I said, our guys are exceptional in the classroom. They're doing a great job in the community, and I'm proud of that. You know, our guys last year, we had a team GPA of over 3.0, uh, community service hours. I mean, I don't keep track of them because there's too many to keep track of, uh, but, but our guys are, are great guys. I love coaching this team. I, I love the makeup, the chemistry, and uh, really from a goals perspective, like I said, on the field, we want to win every game. You know, off the field, I want these guys to build the relationships that, that last a lifetime, and, and our guys are doing that.